plan for the next uh, probably couple classes. Um, today we're going to start talking about um, creating good websites. So we, we talked about in the beginning of the class how creating websites and the process of web development really has two parts to it, has two components. The one component is the technical component. In other words, the language that you use, you know, the HTML code. How do you make a link? You make a tag in a certain way and that makes a link. Or how do you use CSS to change the color of stuff? All those things are technical questions. You can look those up and get an answer. All right? The other aspect of, of web uh, development is the design aspect. And that's a little less hard to, or I'm sorry, it's a little less easy to pin down because there's no precise rules for proper web design. But what we can do is we can talk about it and come to some conclusions. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out and talk about good web design. All right. And we'll talk about it on a couple levels. We'll talk about what makes a page a, a good web page, and then we'll talk about what makes a website a good site. In doing so, we'll keep a few things in mind. All right. First of all, um, this is a process that requires planning to come up with this. Good things don't happen by accident. If you go out and start hammering together wood in a field, you're not going to have a house. All right? You'll have a pile of wood nailed together. All right? It's similar with web design. You know, if you don't spend the effort to think through and plan and come up with something, um, you may have a collection of web pages, but you won't necessarily have a good or a well-designed website. So the, the, the result of creating a good website really is obtained through planning and then through executing the plan. So that's what I mean when I say you need the design skills to figure out what to do. And then finally you need the technical skills to take what you've decided to do and actually make it real. If you don't have either one of those, you're not going to have a good website, right? Um, you could have a website where all the tags work, all right? But if it's poorly designed, it's not going to be effective, all right? You could have a great idea for a website, but if you can't implement it technically, then it's not going to work either, all right? If you don't have the technical skills or the design skills, you'll have a real mess, all right? A good website will occur when you have good design skills and good technical skills. Now, most people are, are, you know, not everyone is equally good with one versus the other. A lot of people in web development tend to either be focused on the design aspect of it or the technical aspect of it. And, you know, just like, you know, no one is equally skilled in, in every particular thing, you know. I mean, if you talk in sports, you know, a basketball player, a basketball player isn't going to, you know, it's not going to be a basketball player that has the perfect outside shot, perfect rebounder, perfect free throws. You know, each individual is going to have their own mix of skills, and web developers are like that. But the idea is, is you should at least be passable in all areas. You know, you should, you should have a certain level of skills. And one, one thing that I hear some students say is, well, I'm not very artistic, so therefore the web design doesn't work for me. Well, we're not making art here, all right? And we're not, uh, web design is not art the way that art is art, all right? Uh, some of the ideas and some of the concepts may carry over, you know, balance and white space and all that. Th those are concepts that could apply to either art or graphic design. But we really have a different set of goals here. We're, our goal is to communicate a message. And therefore, while we can come up with a set of, of cut and dried rules, all right, we can come up with some pretty well-defined principles that will sort of guide you in how to create pages and sites that are well designed. 
All right. So that's what we're gonna we're gonna start out with. Uh, this will culminate in a discussion of the process that I want you to go through in planning and creating your website for the project. So we'll move from speaking very general about what makes a site good to then discussing, well, you have to plan it, then what method do I want you to plan this assignment? And there's different methods for planning it, but I think the one that's covered in the, the Jesse James Garrett book is sort of a good way to plan a website. It, the, 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 the activities they have you do and the, the steps that they have you do, I think are, are pretty solid, and we'll talk more about that. All right, good websites. What makes for a good website? You all have identified, or, or most of you that have turned in week two lab, which I'm part of the way grading through. Um, I, I had hoped to get it done yesterday, but I didn't, so I should wrap it up today. But for week two, you had to identify three good and three bad websites. And people came up with some really good, good ones. And people came up with some really bad, bad ones. What makes a website good versus bad? Go ahead. OK. One characteristic is to be able to find what you need. And I'm paraphrasing, but I think I'm getting the idea right. Being able to find what you need easily. All right. Certainly, I don't think anyone could argue that. Um, no one's going to say, I want uh, a good website is one where I can't find what I need. Or that doesn't have what I need on it. All right. So to be able to, or, or I can find what I need, but it's going to, you know, it's going to be difficult. You know, it, it almost sounds like common sense, but it is important to go and analyze this. What you run into with website design is you have people thinking that good website design is making nice colors and having cool fonts and things like that. That's only a very small aspect of web design, and therefore it's good that that. Um, we start out with this as a point, because that's really why people are going to the site, to find some information to, to participate in some activity. You had your hand up. I was pretty much going to say the same thing. Okay. Yeah, a good word for that is user-friendly. All right. It is funny, because there are bad websites in the world. And I'm not just talking about like a website that some 14-year-old kid throws, you know, throws up on the internet. There are professional bad websites out there. So you might think, well, gee, all this stuff is just common sense. Well, if it's common sense, you know, why isn't everyone doing it? You know, one, 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 one uh, lesson I think I've learned in my life so far is common sense really is as common as the name would imply. All right. Yes, you had your hand up. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll paraphrase that. I'll say content, well organized, and what else did you say? Not cluttered. Yeah, not cluttered or crowded. All right. And I think you said something like uh, a, a, a logical order or a reasonable order or something like that. Anyone else care to add to this list? Okay. Either one. We'll go back um, to you. I was saying um, like your links having um, Okay. Um, I'll extend that a little bit. I'll say links and other content well chosen. And I'll say the right amount. Now we can we can argue about what the right amount is, but 
Not too many, not too few. You had your hand up again? Um, yeah, we'll say that's appealing to the Yeah, appealing. APP? Yeah, I was trying to think. A little early for me. Appealing visually. So yeah, the colors and fonts at one level do, do matter. I will add on to this of saying this is appealing. I'll add on to this because these two sort of go together is that the content is legible as well. You know, no yellow font on a white background. You know, that isn't particularly appealing and it's not legible. Anyone else have anything that they'd care to add? Not yes. Too many ads. Okay, not too many ads. Um, I will throw that into this category because that's having the right amount of content. So yeah, that's a good point about ads. Yes. Okay. I'll put that up here and say good content. So, you know, accurate, relevant. Anyone else? This is a great list. All right. This I, I'm not being patronizing, but I believe this is the best list a class has ever come up with. Yes. Um, you said good photos, proper images. Let me extend that a little bit in saying that the content is effectively presented. All right. I, I think that's a, that's another way of saying uh, that. You know, if you are um, showing how to put something together, maybe you have a dozen pictures showing you first you do this, then you do this, then you do this, then you do this. But another site or uh, another page where you're doing something else, maybe you don't need a dozen pictures. Maybe you just need one well-chosen picture. Maybe you don't need a picture at all. All right. Anything else? Yes. Can't be seen locally or in any browser. Okay. Oh, that's a very good one. Um, uh, visible, or how, how can I say this? Uh, the, the, the good technical term for this is cross-platform. That means that it works on different browsers operating systems, Windows versus Mac, uh, Linux, um, different screen sizes, and works in a mobile environment as well. That's an excellent addition to the list. Yes? I was going to say easily found, like on search Um, that's that's a good one. Um, easily found on search engines. This aspect of it we don't necessarily talk a lot about in this class, but that's a that's a good one to have on the list. Anything else? You guys are making my job easy uh, today. Um, you must have heard me before class complaining that I had a, a late class Tuesday and then an early class on Wednesday. So you're thinking, well, gee, we better, we better pick up the slack in case he's not 100% today. All right. And, pardon me? Accessibility. Accessibility. These things actually sort of go together. And accessibility means that it accommodates people with disabilities. Now we'll have a whole section on this, but it is important, I think, to introduce the topic now. All right. Anything else? Accommodate 
Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's all right. I'll put a little squiggly line underneath it. Spell check caught it. Uh, anything else? This is a real good list. Let's go and let's try to, we just sort of listed these out. Let's go and try to pluck out some important things. And there might be some common themes that run through these. First of all, right off the bat, good content. All right. There's a, there's a phrase in, in the web world, and that is, uh, content is king. If you'd prefer, content is queen. Or, content rules. All right. Uh, people are not going to your site to be dazzled with your web development skills or your technical expertise or your design skills. People are going there to get some information, to do something, to be entertained, all right? Any number of reasons depending on the particular site and the particular organization. So the bottom line is if you don't have good content, um, your site isn't going to work. Um, good content, really, going back to what we wrote up here before, is two aspects to it. Number one, and maybe we'll extend this a little bit. Number one is is accurate, of course. You know, it can't be you know inaccurate content. Number two is relevant. All right. The one thing that we get if we sort of combine this with this is that, yeah, we want to have good content, but we want to have the right amount of content. All right? The right amount of content. And exactly what we mean by the right amount might vary in instance to instance. Now, unfortunately, some people go to the, to have this sort of philosophy. All right? G, if you know, 10 pages worth of content is good, then 100 pages worth of content would be great. All right? What's wrong with that kind of thinking? What's wrong with that attitude? No one's going to read 100 pages. No one's going to read 100 pages? All right. Well, someone might be interested in some of those extra 100, so what's the harm? More isn't always better. More isn't always better. Why not? That's that's very true, but what's the harm of having more? Oh. Okay, go ahead. Okay. People scan, so by putting more content, it may be obscuring your message. People might lose interest. People might lose interest. There might be some sort of repetition. Might be some sort of repetition. You're going off the subject line. You might be talking things that are irrelevant. Anything else? You, you guys are all making excellent points, but there's one word I think that we're missing here. Yes. Won't find it. Right. Won't find it. Because you could argue, you could argue if 10 pages are good, 100 pages are great. Well, if you only need those 10 pages, people can just ignore the other 90 pages. Well, maybe not. Right? Now, those extra 90 pages might appear as links that they're going to have to sift through and think, gee, am I interested in this? Am I interested in this? All right. Uh, anything that you add on your site has a potential to distract people from the really important stuff. All right. That is, I think, one of the, the guiding principles that, that I think in web development. Anything you add on your site could distract them from the other stuff on your site. If, so if you're adding something that has good value, then yeah, go ahead and add it. All right? But be careful not to add too much, all right? Because if you add too much, then 
you're not adding value and you might be distracting people from what it is that they really want to do. All right? So, along with content, yes, we want it to be, you know, accurate, relevant. The other thing I would say would be timely. But we want to make sure that that content is well chosen, that we pick the right amount of it. That more, uh, someone said, more isn't always better. All right? And unfortunately, and you can see this in not just websites, but other software. Unfortunately, oftentimes the, the, the standard mindset of a software developer is that very thing, that if 10 features are good, 100 will be great, 1,000 will be magnificent, and so on. And that isn't the case, you know. Um, not to bash, because it is a good product, and it's very popular, and, and it's used worldwide, and so on. But if you look at some of the Microsoft Office products, yeah, those do a million things. But a lot of times when I'm making a document, I don't need to do a million things. I may need to put my document in, and I may need to put some headings in. <laughs> That's it. You know, That's why some applications, such as Google Docs, I think are becoming popular, because uh, it, you know, some software definitely suffers from the overkill effect, that, that they put so much in it and give so much power and flexibility that, yeah, you can, you can do millions of things, but most of the time people might not want to do millions of things. Most of the time people might just want to do something very basic and very simple. All right? Um, one guiding principle in developing any sort of software, including web pages, is simple things should be simple. All right? And then complicated things should be at least possible. So let's say, for example, I'm doing a website for a bakery. All right? Most fundamental thing about that is I want to know when it's open. You know, gee, is it open on, on Wednesdays? So something simple like going in and finding the hours that it's open ought to be very simple to do. All right? Uh, however, I've been to websites that have had a bunch of pages in it and a lot of content and probably took a lot of work to do. But I had to go and sift through and figure out what the hours that that company or organization was open. What's the phone number for it? I just want to know the phone number, all right? Something simple, something straightforward, something that not just me, but probably a lot of people would want to do ought to be made easy. And if you have excessive content, you're going to obscure the stuff that is, that, that, that is maybe most relevant uh, for the people. So, okay. Yep, we want good content. We want it to be accurate, relevant, and timely. And we want it to be well chosen. All right? We don't want, more isn't always better. All right? Um, the, the, the other phrase that you hear, I think it was originally said um, by architects, uh, the Bauhaus movement, um, not to be confused with the 80s band Bauhaus, but uh, the, the architects of the 30s in Germany is less is more. All right? If you do less, that can be more effective, I think is what they mean. All right? So if we're going to be careful and not put everything that we can think of on the site, how do we decide what to put there and what not to put there? The right amount. Well, what is the right amount? How do we decide that? How do we try to decide that? Let's put it this way. Yes? Maybe get feedback. Okay. Uh, get, uh, get feedback. All right. Feedback from who? Okay. So... Choosing content for your website. The one thing that you could do is get feedback. You could ask your users. Okay? If you can do that, that's a good idea. That's not always possible. All right? But if you can do that, that's a good idea. What's other ways that you can that you can try to decide what to include on your site? 
Yes? Trial and error. Trial and error, maybe. We would hope to do better than that, though. Ah, okay. Put yourself in the shoes of the users and try to figure out what they want to do by visiting your site. Excellent point. All right, I just wrote a bunch of words here, and I might be proving the statement that more isn't always better, because I think I can say that much more quickly and much more effectively. Identify, well, yeah, identify user goals. People go to websites for a reason. And that reason's going to vary with the organization, all right? Um, if you're developing a website for something in the entertainment business, your goal is going to be very different than if you were developing a website for an academic institution. And that would be very different than if you um, developed a website for some retail organization or, or whatever. The point is, is that people are coming to your website for some reason, all right? You need to identify the reasons that they're coming, and that will help, all right? That will help you decide what content to put on the site, all right? Now, a few things to keep in mind is that, number one, there isn't always a single user type that's visiting your site, right? Um, if we think of, of LC's site, Learning Community site, let's list some of the folks that might be visiting that site. Let, let's, let's, let's list the profile of typical users for Learning Community site. Because I might say, identify the user goals, and if I just put it that way, I might think that there's one kind of person that's visiting the site that has one set of goals. And that's probably not the case, all right, for all but, you know, well, I would say for virtually any site. There's actually different types of users. All right, and each one of them might have similar goals, or there might be some overlap, but they also might be different. All right, a mistake that software developers often make is to view the user as though there's one kind of person, and they'll talk about this is what the user would want to do, where in reality there's different kinds of users. Let's list some people that let's list some kinds of people that would visit LC's site. Of course, ideally, in a perfect world, we'd develop a website that worked for every single person on Earth, right? But we can't do that. That's that's absurd, and not practical. But what we can do is better than saying the user. We can say what are the different kinds of users that are going to visit my site. So, what are different kinds of users that would visit LC's site? Yes, a new student. A new student. All right. Another type, a potential student. Another type. <laughs> Go ahead. Faculty. <laughs> Don't get me started on this one. Maybe I'll turn the mic off and make my comments and hope the people at home can't lip read. Uh, next. Currently enrolled students. Currently enrolled students, okay. 
I heard another one. Someone say? Parents. Parents. Special needs. Special needs students. Other academic institution. That, that's very true. Um, for example, you know, as, as many of you know, we have a university partnership, all right, where, um, you know, you can take courses here and you can, you can transfer and we have articulation agreements. And, and we have all sorts of partnerships, both formal and informal, with a number of different institutions. Well, if uh, an institution was thinking of, say, coming into some sort of collaborative degree with us, they very likely might go to our website and look for information about the degree program and what the classes are and, and so on and so forth to help them decide to transfer. In addition, accreditation uh, organizations, bodies, you know, that stamp their approval on, on our school and say, yeah, they're, they're, you know, they're, 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 they're legitimate, you know, might visit our site to come up with uh, information about that. So, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Uh, you even get things like people who want to go to the soccer center. For yeah, I would just say community members. You know, there's a lot of great um, resources here on campus. You know, sometimes when I'm bored and, you know, times are tough, I don't have a lot of money, you know, I'll check out to see what events are on campus. You know, I went to see uh, last season, I went to see the soccer team play. It was, a, it was a blast, and it was absolutely for free. It was a nice afternoon out in the fresh air, you know, and, you know, get to, get to see some, you know, some of your students uh, in another context. So it was, it was definitely fun. So, yeah, just general members of the community. Yes? Uh, businesses, you know, I want to schedule a lecture. Right. Businesses, and businesses might be involved uh, a couple different ways in visiting the, the, the site, all right? Um, they might be, for example, the uh, Spitzer Center over there. I know that uh, it's, it's, it's a banquet hall uh, that, that you know, and it has great facilities. And I know organizations schedule meetings there. All right. In addition, they might want to schedule um, training. We offer, in addition to our credit courses, we offer some non-credit training. And we also offer um, some custom training. Uh, in other words, Maybe your organization has a very specific need for a very specific software tool, and it's so specific we might not offer like a regular class in it, but they may be able to contract us to come in and train them on a certain tool. Yes? Uh, also, I've seen where uh, different uh, offer jobs. Yeah, well, that would be another one. Great, internships. Yeah, businesses might want to visit the site uh, to... Uh, to uh, supply uh, information about internships and all that. So uh, again, uh, we're not designing LC's website, all right? But the point is, the bigger point is, this is a good list. And you know what? We could probably think of more, all right? We could probably think at least of a few more. The interesting thing is, is these all have goals in visiting the site. They're all visiting the site for a reason. All right. A new student, maybe their main reason for visiting the site is, oh my God, what do I do? <laughs> you know, where do I go? How do I get into a class? That sort of thing. Maybe a potential student would be looking at, gee, why would I want to go to LC versus some other school? A faculty might want to print a request for a sick day form. All right. Or, uh, you know, or, or find out if the course uh, that they're teaching, what the enrollment is for, for a course that they're offering in the spring. All right? Currently enrolled students might want to look to see what classes they need to take to graduate in a particular degree program. Parents might want to know about tuitions and fees and that sort of thing. Now, to be sure, there's overlap, right? A new student might be interested in tuition and fees just like a parent would be. All right? So I'm not saying that each of these groups have unique needs, but each of these groups are going to have some needs that maybe are less important for other groups, all right? maybe are equally important, 
or maybe are not relevant at all. For example, a current student probably isn't too concerned about renting out the Spitzer Hall. All right, it's really low on the priority list. All right, uh, a business uh, person viewing the site in a business context might not really care when the soccer team's playing. All right, but there are people on this list that that um, that would care about that. So, what you have to do when you're creating a website is first try to identify the types of users that are going to be visiting your site. And then try to look and try to see their goals and try to identify what they're after. And that's a challenge to be sure. You know, I've heard people say, you know, Elsie's website is hard to navigate, which, you know, I'd, I'd agree with them in some instances. But if you consider the task at hand, how do you develop a website that accommodates all these different needs and do it in a, in a user-friendly way? It's a challenge. All right? And we can see a little bit how they attempted to do that. Right? If we go to Elsie's website, Look at what is in the navigation on every single page. Current students, future students, business and industry, community services, about us, faculty and staff. And if you go here and click on future students, they have set up information specific for the, the, what the group that we've said what we call potential students. All right? Current students, they have that here. Faculty and staff, that here. All right. So, choosing the right amount of content comes down to making sure you know what the goals are for the people visiting your site. And there can be overlap between these groups. All right? Or there may be some goals that are unique to a particular group. All right? They may be very important for that group and maybe no one else cares about them. In creating the website, you need to figure out which goals you're going to address. All right? um, obviously, the more important goals and the goals that are in common for different groups will probably get a higher priority treatment as opposed to something that maybe is a goal only for one small uh, group. All right. Let's see where we are. So, the right amount of content relates to identifying the user goals and choosing content that will address those goals. Okay? Now, again, it's not just a matter of identifying the goals. We've identified the goals. Well, what is going to help that person achieve that goal? You know, a goal of a potential student at LC will be to decide whether LC is the right school for them. Well, yeah, but what will help them decide? What specific pieces of content will help them decide? Well, the degree offerings, you know. Uh, feedback from other students that are maybe in their degree program. Um, tuition, financial aid opportunities. All these things are things that would help a student decide. So when you identify the goal, you then identify the specific pieces of content that um, you're going to put into these goals to, um, or you're going to put into your site to satisfy these goals. All right. Once you've decided that, you have to decide two more things. Well, yeah, I'm oversimplifying, all right, to be sure. But once you decide 
who your users are, what their goals are, and what content you're going to put on the site to address those goals. You have to decide then, number one, how you're going to organize that material. And then number two, how you're going to present the material. So, first thing I would say on the list, if we're going to make a three-step list, is identify the content that's going to be on the site. And that relates to identifying users, identifying their goals, and identifying what content would address those goals. Now there's a group of folks that I've neglected to mention so far. And that's the organization itself. The organization itself has goals. All right? And they also ought to be met by, um, by the website. For example, um, a goal of LC would be to attract more students into our programs. A goal of LC would be to make aware the community of the variety of programs that we offer, uh, especially new programs. All right? So that would be a goal of the, of the organization. Now the hope is, is those goals will match up with some of the user goals, right? Because when they match up, you have a win-win situation. So. Again, but let's not forget the organization's goals along with along with the uh, the user and the organizational goals. So then we need to decide how to organize it. All right. If we look at our original list. Content well organized. Find what you want easily. All right. Those relate to organizing the material. You can have a lot of great content, but if you can't find it, it's not a well designed website. That's one, that's one thing I hear over and over again by people in defending their website is when people criticize the website, you know, they'll say, for example, you know, uh, I can't find out such and such. And the web designer will say, yeah, but it's on the site. Well, you know what, if it's on the site, but it can't be found easily, then it's just as well not on the site. So we limit the content we're going to put on the site because we want to make it easy for people to find. The other thing we can do to make it easy for people to, to find is to spend some time thinking about how to organize it. All right. Now, when we looked at LC's website, we saw one attempt that they had to organize it, and that is actually by organizing by different types of users. All right. They identified that that would be the one good way to organize the content on the site is saying, okay, here's a tab for current students, here's a tab for faculty, here's a tab for businesses, and so on. There's a lot of ways any particular group of information can be organized. But in Coming up with that way of organizing, you have to take into account what the user's mindset is and what the user knows and what the user doesn't know. Sometimes organizations do something like they'll organize their web page by department. All right? They do that because it makes sense to them. I know what the different departments are here. Well, I know what most of them are, or some of them. I know my department. All right? But you know what? I can't expect the people in the outside world to know, for example, that if you want to study web development, it's talked about in the business division. I know that, and that makes perfect sense to me, but I couldn't expect people from the outside world to know that. People might think it, it's somewhere else in another division. And therefore, when you're choosing how to organize a site, 
again, you have to be the user. You have to put yourself in the user's shoes and think, not how I or the organization see the logical structure of the site and the logical organization, but how the user is going to view it. What's going to be most helpful for the user. All right? We'll have more on this uh, next time. The last step that I want to talk about, though, is deciding how to present the material. And if anything, this is what most people think of when they think of website design. That is, some of the things we identified earlier, appealing visually, appealing visually, legible, content not cluttered, in a logical order, and so on. We'll talk more about what makes a good page design uh, in future classes, but that's a good start. First of all, you should be able to read it. Secondly, it should look good. Thirdly, it shouldn't have too much content on it. Well, by the same token, it shouldn't have too little content. Lastly, the navigation between pages ought to be clear and understandable. What we will do on Monday is, now that we have this overview, we'll look at specifically what your assignment is. So this is kind of just some of the general concepts. We'll see how these concepts apply to your assignment on Monday. And we'll walk through the steps of the document that you need to produce for your design for your project. All right. We'll see you over in lab.